welcome students to one more session of your thermodynamics chemical thermodynamics so we have almost come to the last topic of the chapter <laughs> done so in the previous video i've taught you what is gibbs energy then i've taught you what is delta g naught that is standard gibbs energy then i've shown you the relation between delta g and delta g naught now in this video we'll be learning the important thing that is <clears throat> the criteria of equilibrium under different conditions that's how am i going to derive just see this now from the first law what do we learn we have learned delta e is equal to q minus w isn't it right so how can i write this i can write this as q minus delta v because uh, w is equal to p delta v right so we we also know this what do we know we know <coughs> this particular thing de is equal to dq minus p dv we have studied this in the first law again one more relation which we have learned one more relation which we have learned under entropy what is that we have learned dq reversible by t is equal to ds this is what we have learned so i'm going to relate this particular thing with the earlier one let us see how can i i'm going to write therefore i'm going to write the same in this way i can write the above reaction as de is equal to yes <coughs> tds why because <coughs> here dq by t is equal to ds we have written so dq is equal to i'm cross multiplying this with this so instead of dq i have written this term tds minus ptv done yes let us take this as a first reaction now when i take the second uh, thing after deriving this particular thing now i'm going to write what do i get here if i have to take the condition now this de i'm considering what what quantities i'm considering entropy as well as volume both the things so entropy and volume is zero done so let us take the next criteria now this is done with the first law i'm taking the next criteria what do we know we also learn, learn the formula delta sorry h is equal to e plus pv we have learned this under enthalpy now i'm writing as <coughs> dh is equal to this is written as de this is written as pdv plus vdp here what am i going to here i'm changing the volume here pressure is changed now how can i write this for the i can write the same as i'm get writing get what is de in the earlier so e in the early one we have found here as e is equal to what did we write we have written e as <coughs> tds minus pdv isn't it e value so i'm substituting this value in this video now instead of de this will become tds minus pdv plus pdv plus vdp isn't it yes now cancel this minus and this pdv goes what are we left with we are left with tds plus vdp which implies which is equal to so i have written now i'll write here this implies dh what are the conditions under s and p s and p which is equal to zero here what did we get <coughs> we have got the e under s and v is equal to zero here what we have got dh s and p is equal to zero now let us name this as part 2 reaction 2 now we know one more formula what is the other formula we have learned the g is equal to h plus uh, h minus uh, t ts ts gadan right now let us write i'm writing this as dg is equal to dh minus tds one time i'm differentiating entropy one time s dt now i'm differentiating temperature one time both the things i'm considering and the conditions different conditions i'm considering now <coughs> this is done now let us take <coughs> what do we know what is uh, this an equal to yes this is equal to um, the delta h value this is equal to tds because we have already seen yes for the first uh, reaction delta h is equal to tds right plus vdp isn't it how did i get this i'm turning back yes delta h here okay. here only we got it is it in this one see here dh i'm sorry h is equal to tds plus vdp i've substituted this formula here so dg is what instead of the h value i've written this tds plus vdp that's over then copy this tds here only take this as dt here only now we did this we did this tds and this tds gets cancelled what are we left with we are left with vdp minus sdt 
Now, what is this? How can I conclude this? Under different conditions, I can conclude dg and the temperature and pressure is 0. So, what did I get now under different conditions? I have got under different conditions. First one which I took is DE under conditions of SNV 0. Second thing which we have written is <coughs> DH SNP is 0. The third one which we have learned here is DG TP is equal to 0. That is we have learned. Isn't it? Right. So, all these equations, what do they represent? They represent the condition of equilibrium under different conditions. I'm, I have taken this condition once. I have taken con this condition. I have taken this condition once. So, basically, this particular reaction, the third reaction, you know, it is, you know, the it, it's very important. The Most of the processes occur under constant temperature and pressure only. Like most of the thermodynamic processes. This is a very important thing. So, what are these? We are going to these equations, what do they represent? They are, they represent condition of equilibrium. Under what? Under different conditions. They may ask you this in the exam. So, you should be clear with this concept. Right. So, now let's learn the next important thing that is criteria for spontaneity and Gibbs free energy. Very, very important concept. So, let's write the heading. What is the heading? We are going to learn criteria for spontaneity and Gibbs free energy and Gibbs free energy energy right so this is the most important concept after you learn gibbs energy in standard gibbs energy so what actually is gibbs free energy let us recollect the definition once again so we have a system we have studied system surroundings isn't it now in this system like whatever available energy is there right and that energy if you are trying to use it for doing certain amount of useful work then i call it as gibbs free energy remember that let's write the first definition <coughs> Gibbs free energy what is this this is the energy available energy available where is it, this energy available it is available in the system in the system what am I going to use I am using it for conversion into work into work remember this yes now <coughs> If I have, I have already thought in the previous video, but what temperature, if I take temperature condition, if I take uh, pressure condition, what are the factors, isn't it? Right. Now, for example, if I take a condition that is at constant temperature pressure, I already told you, most of the thermodynamic reactions, they occur at constant temperature and pressure. If I consider this, and if I have to write the for, uh, relation between delta G, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. This is what is the formula. Now, I am giving you the conditions. What are the conditions? Suppose, if I take the same delta G, I said constant temperature and pressure, let's see. I am taking the same delta G and here I am going to give temperature and pressure. Uh, those factors are kept constant. And suppose if this value at constant temperature pressure is less than 0. Okay. Now, the same thing. If I take delta T, here in this case again temperature and pressure again i am writing a condition delta is zero fine so again we will write one more delta g less than zero right here in this case if i have to take the first one so three things i can write in this and i can justify in the next tabular column here the process will be irreversible here again the process is irreversible. Here the reaction or the process is impossible in nature. That means if I have to write, we will justify in just two minutes. Process is irreversible. We will see how I should write, remember this. Now this also processes. This is irreversible, it's spontaneous in nature. But here in this case it is only irreversible. Now in the third case when I take process is impossible. So, when it is impossible, what do I call? I call it as non-spontaneous reaction. It will not happen only. So, we have seen what is spontaneous reaction. 
and non spontaneous reaction also isn't it so it will not happen only right so what is the use of this gibbs free energy we will see so it basically you know i can use this gibbs free energy to the system I means it, it refers to the system only it is not non spontaneous it, i can use that to specifically talk about a system and not i'm not talking about the spontaneous system it will speak about the a uh, non uh, spontaneity of the system how much can i use the available energy for doing work so now when i have to conclude what is the spontaneity of the chemical reaction depends upon so your spontaneity how much is the reaction feasible rather it's going to depend on or or of a chemical reaction is dependent on dependent on and depends on okay let us write i am taking this out it depends on first enthalpy factor second entropy factor it's going to depend on both the factors right most important the available free energy so we have already seen delta g is equal to delta h minus delta t isn't it now how will you write or remember this in the exam so very very important table i am drawing now just see i am going to use this factor that is delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s right now see the conditions let us make one tabular column let me use the next page so that the whole tabular column is clear they'll ask you what is the criteria for spontaneity and gibbs free energy you need to remember this table so uh, just understand from the formula only i'm going to take let's make a whole table like this in this way my lines are not straight enough but i'm trying to make it make you all understand let us make one first tableau column where i have taken what is the factor i said the uh, this particular gibbs free energy or depends upon enthalpy and entropy so i'll be considering both right here i'm going to take delta g uh, of the reactant under temperature now here i'm going to consider entropy temperature and pressure in the third one i am going to consider delta g under temperature and pressure the last one would be the remarks okay this is the thing now if this delta g value is negative after solving we will be so doing some numericals also some je advanced numericals only i'll be doing so whenever delta g value is negative in the particular reaction remember this <coughs> if it is negative and if the entropy value if you are getting it positive so always this value you will get as negative then such reaction is <coughs> spontaneous in nature spontaneous that is the first one suppose when you are getting or when you are solving a numerical where you are getting delta g value is positive then obviously because delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s if this is po negative this will be positive here if this is positive this will become negative then what will happen to this this will be always positive then the reaction is non spontaneous in nature remember that this is also over next condition suppose if you get both the values positive let us assume in after solving the numerical getting both the values positive there are two conditions here <clears throat> what is the condition this is at low temperature where delta g is positive second factor this is at high temperature <clears throat> when delta g is negative okay at high temperature it obviously become negative isn't it these are the two conditions suppose if positive and positive values if we get and that too it is low temperature then the reaction is non spontaneous and at high temperature the reaction will become spontaneous in nature remember that right now let's take one more condition here which condition am i taking i am taking suppose if i take get delta g negative and delta s also negative again we have two conditions what are they one is at low temperature 
so when it is low temperature delta g is all is negative suppose if i increase start increasing the temperature at high temperature delta g will become positive then what will happen to this reaction this reaction will become spontaneous in nature and this reaction will become non spontaneous in nature remember that okay so this is the condition so basically a uh, variation of this is the most important table of gibbs free energy understand go with the criteria see what are the temperature or see whether it is low or high and see whether the reaction is spontaneous or not now if i have to take okay my page is missed out okay let me take suppose if i have to take the i, I have to show the variation of gibbs function right i have to show variation of gibbs function that is delta g sorry or g it is only g with temperature and pressure how will i show let i'll show you it temperature and pressure just see we have learned this formula isn't it what what formula did we learn we have learned g is equal to h minus ts which is equal to u plus pv correct so what is h h is equal to u plus pv this ts is like that minus ts now let us differentiate i am writing it as du plus differentiating pdv minus tds plus now i am going to differentiate here i have differentiated v now i'll differentiate p yes this becomes vdp minus here i have differentiated in yes now i'll differentiate t s dt now what do i get then <coughs> dg is equal to vdp minus sdt why <coughs> sorry right so here okay from this i've got the equation those get cancelled out now what what can we write at constant temperature at constant temperature dg is equal to vdp or i hope you like this do g by do p is equal to t isn't it i've taken this down and now what here is equal to v that temperature is constant because constant temperature so this is same thing if i write it as constant pressure the same factor dg is equal to sdt how can i write this i can write this as g by t do g by do t under what what is the thing pressure is constant p s will become negative this is the concept student so this is gibbs energy standard gibbs energy and criteria for gibbs free energy i'll be meeting you in the next video with certain numericals of ge advanced very important numericals let's stay connected yes keep practicing it on a daily basis thank you for watching students